In the early morning hours of June 26, 2022, several cameras located around the streets of Ilford, northeast London, captured the ominous actions of Jordan McSweeney. After multiple failed attempts to follow his targets, Jordan set his sights on Zara Alina and what followed was nothing short of a nightmare. But who was Zara Alina? Why was this terrible man following her? And what happened after? Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, folks. My name is Adrian, and welcome or welcome back to Coffeehouse Crime. Today we're looking at the case of Zara Alina. Now this story is something straight out of a horror movie. There are no words to describe the senselessness of this case, or to describe our killer. By the way, I post true crime and strange cases here on a weekly basis, so if that does sound like a kind of thing, please consider subscribing to the channel, it really does help me out. And now, with that said, please grab yourself a coffee, pull up a seat, and get ready for the deep dive. This is the case of Zara Alina. Welcome back to London, folks. Today, we set our sights on the northeastern corner of this city, in a large town named Ilford. Found nine miles away from central London, Ilford has always remained part of modern London's rich and turbulent history. The town rapidly expanded in the 1940s, after the central tube line service was expanded into Newbury Park. And thus, its population peaked in the year 1951 at 185,000 residents. Of course, this was just after World War II, where Ilford became an instrumental town to the country's military. During this time, it manufactured components and equipment for the war, including shell cases, aircraft parts, and electrical radio equipment. But all of this would come at a price, because Ilford was well targeted by Germany. Over 1,000 residents were killed after six long years at war, with roughly half of those from air raids and bombs. Nowadays, Ilford has no distinct economy, and is primarily commercial and retail, surrounded by residential developments. It also serves as the main transport corridor between London and Essex. In recent years, Ilford has become one of the most multicultural towns in England, and as such, serves some of the best food found near London. And this is pertinent when it comes to Mediterranean, Turkish, and Grill, all the favourite spicy meats. One of those families living in the area for many decades was the Alina family. Today's story is all about the life of Zara Alina, and aged 35 in the year 2022, Zara was described as a carefree spirit with the most caring heart. She was born in the winter of 1986, having grown up in the area. Her grandparents had moved from Pakistan in the year 1968, and eventually had five children. As the first child to her mother, a single parent, Alina was blessed to be raised by multiple generations in the household. They gave her all the love, support, and education she needed. This included many trips around England to museums and galleries, and eventually across Europe too. Much like the rest of her family, she became an avid traveller. She loved adventure, and always wanted to experience new things. As a child, she was happy, excitable, sociable, interested in almost everything around her, and always seemed full of energy. She took up ballet, tap dancing, swimming, and dressing up, and was especially gifted in ice skating. Zara always knew what she wanted to be, even from a very young age, and at the age of five, she said she wanted to become a lawyer. And you know, that aspiration became a reality. According to her family, nobody worked as hard as she did. And not only had she become a law graduate, but she also supported refugees fleeing violence, and was working towards becoming a fully qualified solicitor. To add to this, Zara also volunteered in soup kitchens to help refugees and the homeless. She had great empathy for people less fortunate, and something Nero would greatly appreciate, but she was a massive lover of cats too. Alongside all of this, she also cared for her mother and grandmother, ensuring they had food, medication, and company. Put short folks, Zara did very much good for the world. Moving into the year 2022, Zara had completed a legal practice course to finally practice as a solicitor. She had just started working for the Royal Courts of Justice, keen to complete a two-year work placement in order to become a fully qualified solicitor. We're moving to the evening of June 26, 2022. It was a warm evening here in the UK, with temperatures reaching 20 degrees Celsius or 68 Fahrenheit. Zara arranged to meet a friend at a local pub named the Great Spoon of Ilford, 
and after having dinner and a drink or two, the two moved on to another bar in the local area. With midnight fast approaching, Zara decided to keep the evening clean, deciding to drink water instead of alcohol, and focusing on the conversation as the evening's main highlights. Spending the Sunday evening with her friend, she had done absolutely nothing wrong. She was simply a happy, healthy young woman living her best life in London. However, while all of this was happening, more sinister events were simultaneously taking place. Unfortunately, as much as I don't want to, this is where we have to bring the video's attention to the man named Jordan McSweeney. Jordan has to be one of the most unlikable characters I've come across. I usually bite my tongue and keep my opinions myself, but this has to be said. The man is a total psychopath and a complete narcissist. Jim selfies aside, Jordan was a meathead. He liked bare knuckle punching, often got in fights, and the women around him usually avoided him. 29 years old at the time of this story taking place, Jordan already had 28 convictions under his name, for a grand total of 69 crimes that dated back to the year 2006. These crimes range from racially motivated offences, driving offences, and assaulting police to battery and assault causing bodily harm. He began his criminal career as a teenager, which may be a sign of the dysfunctional family that he once endured. Unfortunately, Jordan suffered violence and sexual abuse as a child. Though nothing he was deprived of in terms of love, boundaries, or safety could begin to justify his actions and attitudes as an adult. Facing prison was no deterrent for the man, because, put quite simply, he grew up in it, and prison was his home for most of his young adult years. On June the 17th, 2022, Jordan was released from custody after serving a portion of his sentence. And four days later, he went to live with a friend in his caravan, which was found in a fun fair in Valentine Park in Ilford. Jordan was obligated to attend appointments with the probation officer as part of his release. However, as you can likely imagine, he failed to do such a thing. As he would have been told multiple times, breach of this condition would lead to his arrest and return to prison. This led to his license being revoked on June the 24th. However, as you can see, he was still prowling the town two days later. Jordan had spent most of his Saturday night getting plastered at the Great Spoon in Ilford. He spent most of his time here pestering women, getting into arguments, and eventually got kicked out at 11pm after harassing a female member of staff. After walking north in the direction of Cranbrook Road, Jordan began his hunt for a victim. Now, this is where our story begins to get dark. Mind you, this was only after almost getting hit in the face by a bus. As you can see in this footage, he was, what us British would say, completely off his tits. And just after almost getting hit by this bus, he almost had a fatal encounter with a car. Shortly after midnight, a surveillance camera caught him stalking this unknown woman. With his clear lack of composure and shamefully drunk behaviour, she noticed that she was being followed. Running into a nearby shop, she hoped that she would lose him. But after following her inside, Jordan left the shop to wait around the corner for her. After cautiously exiting, she left the shop to the right, where once again he followed closely behind. The woman sprinted away down the side street, yet still, Jordan followed her with a stride. Thankfully, after 21 minutes of being stalked, she was able to outrun him. But this didn't stop Jordan, because instead, he decided to find a new target. Jordan wandered the streets for a whole extra hour, getting into various short altercations with women, all who rebuffed his actions. At 1.56am, he found his next target. He followed her into Northbrook Road and beyond over the course of several minutes. Interesting side note, but two other men on the opposite side of the road became aware of this, but did nothing to intervene. Now, thankfully, shortly after 2am, she became aware of his presence, gazing up at him as he almost walked into a lamppost opposite the road. Although not captured on camera, Jordan then overtook her and turned into one of the houses in the nearby street. It is believed that he was waiting to surprise and grab her, though luckily she happened to be making her way to a house on the opposite side of the road and was able to enter it safely. Although these two women were very lucky to escape, it sadly wouldn't be the same for Zara Alina, who, at the time, was leaving the Champs sports bar on Chapel Road nearby. Because she lived nearby, Zara decided to walk instead of get a taxi. And so, after saying goodbye to her friend, she made the short journey back towards her home. However, a few moments later, she would tragically cross paths with Jordan McSweeney. And this would prove to be a fatal coincidence, because she was selected as his next target. 
Jordan followed her for some distance, getting to within a few meters of Zara until she reached a house on Cranbrook Road. The property had an expansive paved front garden and a driveway. Out of respect, and not going into the details, it is here that he sexually assaulted her. She was rendered unconscious, beaten to within an inch of her life. Over the space of nine minutes, he then left her body to return twice, and in all three instances, he stamped on her numerous times. He then carried away her phone, keys, purse, leggings, and underwear, all of which would be later found abandoned nearby. Jordan then tried to make his way back home discreetly, but was captured by over a dozen cameras in doing so. This included him scaling a locked gate, before walking around a well-guarded boathouse and lake. At 2.38am, a camera captured him walking towards the fairground he was staying in. Arriving at 2.47am, he briskly walked across the grounds, trying to avoid any attention. The following day, Jordan was spotted by another camera at the fairground, where he then disposed of his bloody clothes in a bin near the ticket office. Zara was found a short while later by a group of four strangers. They immediately called an ambulance, where paramedics tried to treat her fatal injuries. A helicopter raged above, trying to find her attacker. Despite everything being done in their power to save her, Zara tragically passed away at 10am after five hours of intense surgery. Sadly, too much damage had been caused. The list of pain is extensive, as sadly, she had suffered 46 separate injuries, including severe blunt force trauma, lacerations, and bruising. Now, during the assault, Jordan had used a balustrade to attack Zara, stupidly leaving his fingerprints behind, and thankfully, those fingerprints were already in the police database. And on June 27th, only 37 hours after his terrible actions, the man was arrested in his fairground caravan. Jordan. 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 Jordan McSweeney. Still appearing entirely inebriated, Jordan failed to respond to his name being called numerous times. The lights were on, but no one was home. You're under arrest for rape and murder of a female at Cranbrook Road, okay? On the 26th of June, 2022, in the early hours of the morning. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. If you do not mention when question, something you like relying on court, anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? Stand up. All right. Okay. I've got. I've got. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Avoid. Just going to search you now. All right. Yeah. As you will be aware, we are investigating the tragic murder of a woman in Ilford in the early hours of yesterday morning. I can confirm that pending formal identification that we believe the victim to be a local 36-year-old woman named Zara Alina. Resources from across the Met are being drawn upon to help us identify whoever is responsible and the murder investigation is developing quickly. Our priority is to catch the perpetrator as soon as possible and for that reason there are some aspects of the investigation that I won't be commenting on and I will not be taking any questions. There will be further information that we release to the press and the public as soon as possible. We are keeping Zara's family up to date with our progress and my heartfelt condolences are with them at this terrible time. They are being supported by specialist officers but I cannot imagine the pain that they must be feeling right now. Zara's family and friends were distraught to discover she had passed away. There was no warning or prior cause for concern. She had been taken from them in an instant. Much like in an instant, their worlds were placed upside down. A post-mortem revealed that Zara had died of a traumatic brain injury, prolonged neck compression, and blood loss. And of course, the details were too much for many to bear. Evidence left behind on Jordan highlighted that she had fought back hard, but with his height, weight, and strength, she realistically stood little chance. The public reaction to this case was strong. Dozens of flowers and candles were placed where she'd been attacked, and the movement Million Women Rise backed Zara in full spirit. Her murder sparked national outrage, though arguably not enough, as other cases such as Sarah Everard and Gabby Petito received a much louder voice. Still, hundreds took to the streets to demonstrate their support, and as the details of her killer became public knowledge, came a growing demand for justice. Zara is the latest name to be added to a list of women who have been attacked and tragically lost their lives. We have to 
have a conversation with men, with leaders, with our government, with educators. We need to have a conversation about what we're going to do. This is about changing the mindset. Zara believed women should be allowed to walk the streets and feel safe. Her family are now determined to make that her legacy. Well, tomorrow a vigil is due to take place here at the scene in her memory and people will be retracing her final steps in the hope that it encourages witnesses to come forward. Today, a 29-year-old man appeared in court charged with her murder. He is due back in court in September. To add to the mountain of evidence already placed against Jordan, police officers would soon find his bloodstained shoes and jeans in the caravan park. And if that wasn't enough already, they would soon learn that the entire assault against Zara had been recorded by a neighbour's security camera. It remained clear throughout all surveillance footage that he held no care, no regret, and no contrition to his terrible actions. But now, the judge and jury would have to decide. After his arrest and arriving at the police station, Jordan claimed that he was on medication for ADHD and also suffered from split personality disorder. He also claimed that he'd been bitten by a dog, but refused treatment from medics. And in addition to this, he began to threaten all officers at the station. To add to his obscene levels of audacity, when questioned about the murder, he yawned loudly and told the officers that they were boring him. His behaviour was not acute from drugs or drinking either. In three separate interviews conducted over the following days and months, he expressed complete disrespect for the situation. Put short, the man simply didn't care. Moving into the legal proceedings of this case, Jordan McSweeney had at least one slither of respect for his victim. He pleaded guilty to the assault and murder of Zara Alina, and in exchange for his guilty plea, his case would not go to trial. But Jordan wouldn't go down without causing more grief and disgust to all of those involved. Not wanting to revisit the events he was responsible for, he refused to be present for his own sentencing. The judge remarked that, although there was no sign of planning or premeditation for murder, Jordan sought a vulnerable woman to attack. Now, let's not forget that Jordan had been in trouble with the law before too, and although this was his first conviction of a sexual nature, he had already been in trouble for violent behaviour. This included violence to previous partners throughout the last 12 years, and many disturbances while in prison. Although Jordan claimed to have ADHD and a personality disorder, no psychiatric report was ever produced for him, as he never requested one. However, it was noted that he was someone who struggled in the community, and had genuine difficulty in making and maintaining a healthy social life and relationships. The judge further remarked that his antisocial upbringing and the abuse he suffered as a child held no real excuse for his terrible crimes, and he bears full responsibility for his actions. As such, Jordan McSweeney was sentenced to life imprisonment, a mandatory term here in the United Kingdom, with a minimum term of 38 years behind bars. During his sentencing, the judge said, The defendant's decision not to come up from the cells to court to hear the devastating impact of his crime shows that the man who took Zara Alina's life has no spine whatsoever. To further add salt to the wound, it was considered that the time Jordan had served between his arrest and sentencing was considered to be for his previous offence, meaning his minimum sentence of 38 years began on December the 14th, 2022. This means that the earliest time he can ever see the light of day again will be in the year 2060. One of the largest side notes about this case is how the justice system ultimately failed Zara. Much like the case of Eve Carson, existing holes in the system allowed Jordan to slip through the net during his probation, and in turn gave him the opportunity to murder Zara. It was admitted that probation services began recall proceedings on June the 22nd, after he violated his probation conditions and missed two meetings. However, the police were only notified about this on June the 24th, which were two days after recall proceedings began. They paid his property a visit to arrest him the following day. However, Jordan was not in at the time and with no sense of urgency around his arrest, he remained free in the wild. Zara was murdered four days after recall proceedings began, and two days after he was supposed to be arrested. So, why was this murder allowed to happen? To add to this, with a number of crimes, convictions, and disturbances on his profile, Jordan was obviously a repeat offender. So, why was he allowed out on probation in the first place? 
In a cruel twist of fate, Zara had become the victim of a crime she often spoke about with friends and family. She advocated for women's safety, a strong woman who spoke out for those who couldn't. She felt safe taking the short journey home through Ilford. It is easy to see why she felt safe. She was walking in a safe space surrounded by security cameras. To add to all of this, it was a hot summer night here in the UK. With many of our houses not fitted with aircon, windows would likely have been open, which means it's likely that people must have heard her screaming, yet thought nothing of it. Being attacked like that in someone's front driveway was extremely overconfident of Jordan. Yet somehow, nobody was able to intervene. It's a harrowing thought when you think about it. Now, Jordan had the advantages of strength and surprise, but in everything else, Zara was better than him. She was talented, spirited, intelligent, and kind. People often worried that Zara had way too much on her plate, when in reality, she had so much to give. She looked after her mother and grandmother, volunteered at local food shelters, and made friends with everyone she met. Even months after her passing, her family found small gifts she'd already bought for far-off birthdays. She was a listener, and a thoughtful one too. And now that she is gone, her absence leaves a void that is impossible to fill. To wrap things up, I feel there is no better way to end this story than with the words of her aunt. Since June 2022, our lives have completely changed. We have lost faith, we have lost confidence, we have lost joy, and we feel broken. We are disconnected from ourselves and from each other. We are not okay. We are prisoners of a narrative that has been thrust upon us. We have lost a part of ourselves. And then, in the midst of that, we are angry. We want change. We want other women to be safe. I don't feel sorry for us. Even though we have this huge gap in our lives, this huge hole, and our lives will never be the same. I feel sorry that she lost the rest of her life. This is about a young woman who lost everything, and about a society who lost somebody that was giving who lost somebody that was powerful, who lost somebody that wanted change, who lost somebody who was good. And sadly, thus concludes the end of our story today, folks, which, to be honest with you, was quite a tough one. Moving forward, I hope that Zara's family and friends find the peace and comfort they deserve. Thank you so much for being here with me today for another video about Coffee House Crime. I really appreciate your support. Instead of my own, Zara's family now ask two fundamental questions. They ask, what can the system do to better identify killers and sex offenders? And what practical steps can be taken to end misogyny? Please share your thoughts and answers in the comments section down below. And as always, I'll see you again very soon for another video. Just a quick reminder, but I'm currently running a giveaway for a free coffee machine until the 9th of May. You can find more information in the comments section down below or on my social media profiles. Feel free to follow me in my adventures at Coffee House Crime on Facebook and Instagram or at Coffee Hate Crime on Twitter. And if I timed this video correctly, I should currently be on holiday. I also have a Patreon where you can get early access to my videos, free videos, exclusive content, merchandise, and much, much more. That's Coffee House Crime on Patreon. And I think that just about wraps up today's case, folks. Thank you so much for being here for another video by Coffee House Crime. And as always, I'll see you again very soon for another video. Until that moment arrives though, remember to look after yourself, look after each other, and of course, stay safe. Thank you, and goodbye.